All right, so continuing, I just want to talk also about the exponential function just for a little bit, and that'll be it for, for this little uh, supplement to Chapter 2. So we define the exponential function, the complex exponential function, e to the z by e to the x plus cosine uh, times cosine y plus i sine y, which is to say that it's e to the x times e to the i y. Now, the way we should think about this formula is that e to the x is the magnitude and e to the i y is the direction. Um, so notice that the, the argument, in other words, the standard angle um, of e to the z is actually given by the imaginary part of z, which is y. And the magnitude is uh, of e to the z is e to the real part of z, which is a, which I'm using x to denote. So some features here. We, we should notice that the domain of z, the domain of the exponential is the whole complex numbers. Um, but the range is, is only the non-zero complex numbers because... Um, e to the i y is cosine y plus i sine y, and, and oops, e to the i y is cosine y plus i sine y, and you you should know that neither uh, th there's no y for which both cosine and sine are both zero for the same y, right? So e to the i y is non-zero. Of course, e to the x is non-zero. It follows that the the complex exponential is is never zero. All right. So, oh, excuse me. Now. <clears throat> So, um, I would point out that uh, the range is yes non-zero complex numbers, but not just that. It's 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 every complex every non-zero complex number is hit um, infinitely many different by infinitely many different inputs mapping through the exponential. In other words, uh, you could say that the the range of the exponential covers the non-zero complex numbers infinitely many times. To see this explicitly, let's do the algebra. So the algebra is this, if w is equal to e to the z, the question is what z make that happen? Will any z in little logarithm of w um, achieve, this, achieve this aim, achieve this goal? So what is that? Well, okay, we've, we've described this before. Um, in other words, z is an element, uh, that means, well, not z is an element, but z has in particular the form natural log of w plus i principal argument w plus 2 pi j for some j an integer. And so that means that z is equal to the natural log of the modulus w plus i times the principal argument plus 2 pi j times i. So the underlined in red is actually the principal logarithm of w. So basically, uh, the uh, to, to hit w, if we want to get w, if we want to map to w, we can take the principal logarithm of w and feed it to the exponential, or the principal logarithm of w plus any 2 pi multiple of the imaginary number i. All of those map to w. Right? All these map to w. Here's a picture of what's going on. So in the complex plane, z, we have this infinite um, string of points, each one of these separated by 2 pi in the imaginary direction. I've drawn these two green dotted lines, minus pi and pi, to illustrate possible standard angles for the principal argument, right? Um, well, the angles I'm thinking of as being y, going back to what I said to start with. Sorry for the commentary by Benjamin. I could tell him to be quiet, but it will have no effect. Um, so anyway, so like this is log 2 pi of w. Uh, this would be log of w somewhere between minus pi and pi in terms of the y value. Um, and of course, all of these have the same the same x value. They're all x equals to the natural log of the w. But this whole infinite tower of points separated each by 2 pi, this discrete spectrum of points, all of those map to the same w in the complex plane. So choosing one of these is selecting a branch of the logarithm. Logarithm is multiply valued. So here's the standard one. Um, we can picture the complex exponential and the uh, principal logarithm as a local inverse. And, and here's, here's how it's going. I, I've added some other aspects to this picture to try to communicate some things and different features. Um, so this is, is almost true. I mean, to be more precise, I should really say, um, well, I'll, I'll come back to that. This is... This is, this is, 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 it's not, well, anyway, I will clarify this a little bit in a bit. Um, setting that aside for the moment. 
uh, if we look at the slit complex plane, right, because e to the, well, e to the, e x equals plus or minus i pi, which would be points on the top or bottom horizontal axis, right? Let me picture those for a second here. Like here's x minus i pi, here's x plus i pi. Both of those, both of those map to e to the minus x, which is on the negative real axis. And so if we take this horizontal strip with these edges deleted, we map to the map to the slit complex plane. Um alright. Oh, I'll be right back. I'm sorry guys. My youngest had been abandoned at the table by his siblings. He is now being rescued. Rest assured, everything's okay. Moving along. <laughs> um, so the exponential of this horizontal strip maps to the slit complex plane. And um, and I've, I've done some more things, like uh, I've done some color coding here. This red um, open line segment from... Um, so, like, what is that red segment? We have a notation for that, actually. I think our notation would be minus i to i, if we want to give it that orientation. All right. Um, that maps to the unit circle, actually, under the exponential map. See, because if you look at f of, f of i, y, make sure I keep this picture in there, um, if, if we look at f of i, y, well, that's e to the i, y, and that's, that's a point on the unit circle. So the red vertical line segment maps to the unit circle. On the other hand, if we look at um, x less than 0, right? If we look at x plus i, y, x less than 0, like a point in here. Then any such point is going to map to e to the x times e to the i, y, which is a point in the interior of the unit circle over here. Of course, not hitting that deleted strip. And on the other hand, if we're looking at this half of the infinite strip with positive x, well, that's giving us, that's mapping to points with radius larger than zero, larger than one, so points outside the unit circle, like that. So this is the deal. It, we, we map the whole half of, the whole half of the infinite horizontal strip with negative x maps to the interior of the unit circle. Everything else out here maps to the exterior of the unit circle, again, we don't, uh, we've deleted this, uh, this strip in the interest of having a continuous, uh, continuous local inverse. All right. So here's the, uh, I, I was, I was, uh, mentioning that this is perhaps, I mean, it's not wrong, but the thing is, uh, I'm not using the whole logarithm. I'm not using the whole exponential. Actually, what I have pictured is a restriction of the exponential and, and also the log. To be more picky, I should say that the log restricted to the slit complex plane, principal logarithm restricted to the slit complex plane is the inverse for the exponential restricted to u, where u is that open half, uh, that horizontal strip with, with open edges. And finally, one parting comment is if another way we can understand complex functions, and we'll, we'll think more about this as we go on, is we could think about taking like a little square rectangle in the z-plane and seeing what exponential does to it. If you study that, right, um, if we have, uh, you know, it, it all goes back to the, the way to think about this, of course, is just that e to the x plus i y equals to e to the x times e to the i y, and e to the x is the radius, and y is the angle. So if we fix x, but let y change, that means we're changing the angle while holding the radius constant. That's a circle, part of a circle, rather an arc, right? If we fix x, like x equals to x1, and hold the radius, that means we're holding the radius constant, but we're letting the angle, angle y, change from y0 to y1. That's this, this, this arc out here. And then, of course, if we, if we fix the angle y0 and we let x vary, that varies the radius e to the x from e to the x0 to e to the x1, like this along angle y naught and along angle y1, we go from radius e to the x naught, radius e to the x1 in the image over here like that. So 
The complex exponential takes this little rectangle and maps it to this uh, you know, sector. And sometimes it's informative to see how a complex function maps a little rectangle from, from the domain to its, to its image. Um, there are various websites that do a much better job about this than I'm doing right now. And I have some of those linked, I think, on my webpage. So anyway, thanks guys. Bye.